That is the sound you never want to hear. That is the sound of a warning siren going off at a nuclear power plant. When you hear that sound, it means there is a problem. Welcome to Nuclear Hot Seat, the weekly podcast keeping you up to date on all things anti-nuclear, with an emphasis on empowering you, me, and we the people to an activist response. My name is Libby Halevi, and I was staying with friends one mile from the nuclear reactor at Three Mile Island when the nuclear accident happened there. That's why I produce and host this podcast every week, because I know firsthand that whether you can hear the sirens or not, we are all in the nuclear hot seat. Today is Tuesday, November 22, 2011, day 256 since the Fukushima tragedy began on March 11th, and here is the latest nuclear news. I am excited today to have on our program for our interview Ben Davis, Jr., Now, Ben authored the upcoming California Ballot Initiative on Nuclear Energy. He is a self-taught legal professional specializing in environmental, election, and nuclear law. He drafted the initial petition that led to the closure of the Rancho Seco nuclear power plant in the late 1980s and has filed many lawsuits concerning energy, rates, and the environment. Ben, welcome to Nuclear Hot Seat. Thank you. It's nice to be here. It's great having you. So let's get to this. Tell us, what does this ballot initiative propose? This ballot initiative would close our nuclear power plants immediately after it was passed, which would happen, which will happen in November of 2012 on the presidential election ballot. It will keep them closed until the federal government comes up with some way of handling nuclear waste, as it was supposed to have done years ago. Likely that will never happen is what I'm thinking at this point. So it's likely California will never have an operating nuclear power plant again. This is great. And does it say that as as directly? Does it say, okay, vote for this and uh, it will shut down the nuclear power plants? Well, by it, I'm assuming you might be referring to the petition itself. Yes, the petition itself. The petition has uh, language on it that is um, a synopsis of the law that I drafted in the initiative, uh, a synopsis that's provided by the Attorney General. It does say basically that. It's not as clear as I'd like it to be, but a person can understand it, and it will is clear enough that we'll be able to get the signatures on this initiative. Wonderful. So why do we need this as a ballot initiative instead of some other form of action? Well, um, when you say instead of, I'm not sure that it's exclusive in that manner. I, I encourage people that are in the anti-nuclear, anti-nuclear movement to move on all fronts, and luckily in California we're doing that. We have some great activists that are pursuing shutting down our nuclear power plants on other fronts, including a Mothers for Peace that's largely a Jane Swanson um, heading up. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rochelle Becker, do you know the name of her group? Alliance for nuclear- No, I'm not familiar with her, but let me know and I'll interview her on another program. She's also from San Luis Obispo, and then there's um, Barbara George from Women's Energy Matters. All three of these people are taking different approaches concerning the NRC in one instance or the Energy Commission of California or the Public Utility Commission. These are all different approaches to closing the nuclear power plant. I think mine is the most direct approach because it actually changes the law so that um, a nuclear power plant simply can't operate here. But um, I think it's good for, even though we don't want to split up our energy, Approaching closing nuclear power plants on all fronts is a good idea. And to the extent you asked me about inspiring and aiding people in um, other states and other countries to close their nuclear power plants, I think it's good to explore all avenues. If they have the option, some states do and some states don't, to do what I'm doing, which Mm -hmm. is draft an initiative and pursue it directly. Um, I think that's the area I'd look into first, but I'd encourage them to look into all areas. Now, is this the first attempt that has been made to put an initiative on the ballot so that our voices, I'm in California as well, so that our voices here could be heard? Uh, No, no. um, I, of course, as you mentioned in introducing introducing me, I drafted the initial petition to close the Rancho Seco nuclear power plant, and that was a more local thing. There's a municipal utility district there, which is about the size of Sacramento County. So that was a county-wide effort to close one nuclear power plant. And uh, although I started that, there were others, um, Mike Ramey, Martha Ann Blackman, who followed through with that effort. 
and, and deserves some mention, so I'm glad I have the opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. But after the um, success of that, or about the time of the success of that, I also filed uh, an initiative similar to the one that I just filed to close California's power plants. That was about 1988. But the, the idea was effectively killed by the fiscal analysis done for the petition, something I have to put on the petition people sign that say how much it's going to cost state and local government if the when the initiative succeeds. And that one set such a high price on it back in 1988 that I was unable to garner gas, grassroots support for the initiative. And I was concerned that that might be the case this time. So I went ahead and got that fiscal analysis prior to garnering my grassroots support. Hold on. Is, is, now, the fiscal analysis, is that something that you create or is that something that exists within government? No, that's something that the Legislative Analyst's Office of California, um, which is a bipartisan or nonpartisan organization that the legislature uses for many um, analyses of fiscal, the fiscal effects of legislation. As I said, they're nonpartisan, but then again, what, what really is nonpartisan? Are they more pro-nuclear or less pro-nuclear? I'm afraid there are many in their midst that seem to be pro-nuclear. And what makes you say that? Analysis. Because the, the analysis I received sets, again, such a high price tag, on, an unrealistically high price tag on closing California's nuclear power plants. And I'd say that, actually, it's an interesting analysis in that, in that respect. First, it says that it may cause rolling blackouts. Now, in fact, that seems that is very unlikely. They said the same thing in Japan when this happened, that there would be rolling blackouts for years to come. In fact, uh, ingenuity stop that from happening. There were, right. There, there were huge cutbacks on, on use of, uh, of power, and that was voluntary conservation on the part of the people of the country. Voluntary conservation, and it never hurts to remind people that conservation is our greatest natural resource. We can use that in California just as they did in Japan. But more so, um, we have other alternatives in California to the energy. It's only uh, in the neighborhood of 15% that the nuclear power plants provide, and in fact, we have a surplus in California that is mandated by the Public Utilities Commission of about 15% or more. I believe it's 20% that kicked in at the when we had the nuclear. Um, I'm sorry, the energy crisis around 2000. So we can cover it in California. That's one of the great things about the position we're in right now is we really don't need these nuclear power plants. So it's a matter of communicating it to the public in such a way that the wording that's on the ballot is not going to deter them from voting yes. I think that can be done, yes. I, I think that can be done, too. I think that needs to be a good focus. In fact, one of the um, great things about the Occupy movement that is growing on right now is it's bringing people's attention to the collusion between the regulator and the regulated and between the government and the industry that shows exactly the flaw in this fiscal analysis that I want the public to see, which is it wasn't an independent analysis. It was too closely driven by the nuclear industry itself. And that's going to have to be one of the big stories we work to get out, and I will certainly align myself with that particular stream of communications. Now, I, w I want to shift this a little bit because our presence on the ballot is not yet a done deal. What do we here in California need to do to get the initiative that you have worded actually on the ballot for November 2012? Well, I think um, you're aware that we need about half a million signatures, and it's going to take some organization to do that. I'm beginning that. I would like to have it running together already, but I'm hoping by the end of the holiday season, sometime by next Monday after Thanksgiving, to have an actual petition available to people. Mm -hmm. I've reserved a domain name of uh, CaliforniaNuclearInitiative.com. Wonderful. We should have that initiative in a downloadable form sometime in the not-too-distant future. Okay, so we're going to be able to send people to a site and say, click here, download petition, you know, print out lots of copies of it. So now I want to make a distinction here. Nobody will be able to sign the initiative online. That's something that's yes. prohibited by law. But you can download an initiative have that hard copy, the paper in your hand, and sign it and mail it back to a, my P.O. box. That's the way we're going to proceed at first. Does a person have to be a registered voter, did you say? Yes, they have to be a registered voter to do it. And the instructions and the limitations on who can and can't sign, mainly just that, that you're a registered voter. 
um, are all printed on the initiative and will be printed on the website. So it's perfectly clear. A person doesn't necessarily need to have to memorize it. They just need to read it as they get the petition in hand. Given that, I, I see the number is uh, 504,760 valid signatures. Do you know approximately how many signatures get kicked out once they start examining, you know, and, and seeing if there are duplicates or inappropriate people or things like that? In other words, what's the overage we're going to have to be aiming for? Uh, I've seen that many times. I don't recall exactly. I would hope 10% would do it, but um, I'm not exactly sure. So we should really be aiming in the, in, in the neighborhood of 600,000 signatures. That sounds a good, like a good uh, in-between. Well, I'm in on that one. Well, that's one less signature I need. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I emailed you earlier to let you know that everybody in my immediate circle of friends and associates and organizations have already been notified that they have been recruited, not only to sign but to uh, have those papers available to have their friends sign and so on and so on. Yes, well, in fact, the way I hope this will circulate is somewhat in the term, we're call, I'm calling it a nuclear chain reaction list. Oh, yes! In which a person like yourself will get a handful of friends, all of which who will promise, upon signing your initiative, to get a handful of friends. If you follow that chain reaction, it doesn't take a long time before you get the number we're aiming at. So I'm hoping, through that process, to be get a, getting these signatures on a voluntary basis without having paid signature gathers mm -hmm. and, a lot less, and in a lot less time than is normally required. I'm counting on the enthusiasm of anti-nuclear activists in California and the fact that we have quite a, quite a groundswell of support to make this work. Well, at this point, I'd like to know if there's anybody who is on this call right now who would like to ask uh, a question of our guest, Ben Davis, Jr., who is the author of the upcoming successful, I'm projecting and intending into the future, California Ballot Initiative on Nuclear Energy and Shutting Down the Nuke Plants. Is there some shy person lurking around in the corner who just has a question they would like to ask? We're gentle, we're nice, we'll listen. Well, Ben, uh, since nobody's jumping in right now, I will take advantage of this opportunity and ask, where can we contact you? How can we stay in touch and get ongoing information on how this initiative is going? The easiest way is um, will be, I hope to within a week or so, have um, CaliforniaNuclearInitiative.com up and running. And that will be the easiest way to get initiatives themselves. I have a P.O. box here in Santa Cruz, California. P.O. Box 3844, Santa Cruz, California, 95063. People can send for initiatives there or with any other um, communications they'd like. What about an email address? Uh, I can offer an email, I suppose, which is bendavis54 at gmail.com. They're welcome to contact me that way. At this point, I'm not being inundated, or at least not beyond my control. So as long as that continues, I'll try to respond to emails that I get. Anything else you can think of that we deserve to know or be thinking about in connection with this initiative? Well, yes. Um, there's one of the reasons that I feel uh, this initiative is important and the end of the use of nuclear power plants in California and the United States and in the world is very important, is we don't need the energy. And what we're doing basically as an energy policy in current day, not only conserving nuclear energy, but our energy mix is quite homogenous. The people who own nuclear energy and oil and coal are largely the same people. And our energy policy basically is that the United States subsidizes the use of polluting energies, and we don't need to do that. Not only are we subsidizing it now, but we're subsidizing it in a way that our future generations, our children, their children, are going to be indebted so that we can use energy today, and that is not uh, a fair energy policy. It's really not fair to people of the future, and it's not responsible today, and we don't need to do that. We really need to start living within our energy budget now, and, and it's a time to turn that corner. And I think to end the subsidies of these, well, too, if you look at the costs of energy today, what we're paying for energy, mm -hmm. Costs are not based on some theoretical free market economy. Instead, they seem to be based by the energy, the energy creators themselves to maximize the political clout of these energy companies. It's way past dollars and cents now. We're paying for somebody who's overturning our own democracy. 
And that's why I think the initiative process in particular is a way to approach it. It's going to be very hard to have our Congress or our representatives in our state legislatures overturn in energy industry interests because they rely on these energy industries for the funds to run for office. If we take that out of the mix by going to, to direct democracy, by going to an initiative, it's something we can do. I'm not on the take. The average voter is not benefiting from this. So I, I think I'm choosing the right way to approach it. Ben, I want to thank you for having chosen this way, for having been such an active activist for so long. Um, after Three Mile Island, I went into shock, and then I went to sleep, and I didn't wake up until after Fukushima. And all through those years, you and so many others like you were actually carrying the torch and doing the battle. So I want to thank you for the work you have done. I want to thank you for the work that you are doing, and I am delighted to be aligning my energy with yours and uh, setting the clear intention that we're all going to be celebrating at least one thing come Election Day in November of 2012. Well, I appreciate that, and I appreciate you doing this radio show also. So this has been Nuclear Hot Seat for Tuesday, November 22nd, 2011. You can find us and links to previous programs by going to the Facebook Nuclear Hot Seat group page. The tech problems with NuclearHotSeat.com have just been solved, and I will be updating the site with all the things that I missed while I was locked out, so you'll have the latest information, and I've got some blog posts to go up as well. We are also available on iTunes. You can subscribe for free, so you never need miss a single podcast. It will come to your email inbox. Now, if you are on the ground and are near a story or hear a story or information about nuclear reactors or nuclear energy in your area, please join our growing army of on-the-ground reporters around the world. You can send me a message on the Facebook Nuclear Hot Seat page, and I promise I will get back to you. This is Libby Halevi of Hardest Street Communications, the heart of the art of communicating, reminding you that we've all had our nuclear wake-up call. Now, do not go back to sleep. Be well, be safe, in the States, happy Thanksgiving to everyone, and I'll speak with you again next week. Bye-bye.